Hi, welcome to another episode of Alta Heaven. Tonight we'll be looking at some more long sword techniques from Swordfish. Mm. I'm joined by Hans Jodlind, who's going to explain what, what he's chosen and why he's chosen them. Over to you, Hans. Okay, thank you. Uh, today we will look at a concept I call setting up the attack. And what that is, is um, that you actually come up with an idea uh, in the exchange and just go through it, you know. You, you find the confidence and the, 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 the right measure and the, the right timing to go through with your own attack. So it's not counter-fencing, not counter-moving in any way. And this is something that we don't, we don't see this very often actually, not in this way that the, that the exchanges I have chosen. Uh, and I think one of the things that you have to have when you do this is uh, confidence in your, in your own technique and you have to have a little courage when you go through with it. Uh, so, just yeah, to clarify, wanna... um, yeah. do, you, do you mean uh, what we're not talking about tonight is is uh, someone who's being opportunistic in the um, the opening? They're actually going in there with a, um, if not necessarily a fully preconceived plan. Uh, they're going in there and they are setting up the conditions that will allow them to finish with a successful technique. They're not counter fighting, yes, exactly. and they're not just going for um, an opening that has presented itself in that tempo. Exactly. That's that's exactly what I meant. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So let's, again, let's, yeah. Let's start with the first technique. Actually, it's uh, uh, Nico Gal uh, Nicolas Gallardo versus Aaron Penenberg. I think it was. No, was it uh, Marcus Savinia? Maybe. It is Marcus Savinia versus. Uh, oh Marcus yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. What I'm doing here is I'm just sharing my screen. Uh, tell me when you can see it. Okay, sure. You can go whenever you want. Okay, so here we go. Okay, Marcus Arrino comes in from the left. He moves in and hits him. Uh, We've actually you can played see... this a little bit slower because uh, most of these techniques are very fast. So we thought yeah. we might play these videos quite slowly. Yeah. Uh, so do you want me to push this back again? Yeah, please do, please do. And what I could say here is Marcus Arrino is fighting uh, a Swedish fencer called Linus, Linus Eklund from GHFS. They are on the big mat. Uh, it's a 10 by 10 meters mat. And that makes uh, the whole thing here because Marcus comes in pretty much from the start. He knows that he's going in and he's going to attack. Um, so we, we can see, we can take a look again. You see, Marcus comes in and here, he comes in with a false edge cut, follows through, and then he cuts the arm. Uh, we're going to take a look in slow motion once again. We're going to start analyzing this a little more. Um, okay, so one more time. Yes, please. And if you can, can you pause when I say pause? Absolutely. And pause. There, okay. Now, take a look on both both fencers here. Uh, Marcus is coming in. He, he has a plan already. He came up with a false edge cut to follow through with the, he's going to follow through with a, with a true edge cut uh, pretty soon. But look at, he's going in forward, forward motion. Yeah. And look at Linus, backwards. look at Linus. That's yeah. perfect. You, keep that one. Look at Linus here. Look at his opponent. Mm. He, he's bad balance, he's going backwards, he's moving backwards because he feels uncomfortable uncomfortable with this whole situation. Marcus comes in with big cuts and his opponent has no idea where this would go, right? Okay, let me take this forward a little bit then. Mm -hmm. So here we're going past, we've got Magnus Lundberg doing the, um, I think so, um, he's coming around round. Yeah, pause here. Yeah, yeah keep that. Here, Linus moves backwards and he's just putting up a defense, uh, he's just putting up the guard just to take that uh, that cut from Marcus. But he has no intention to make it uh, a counter of any mm. of any sort. Marcus, uh, sorry, Linus is just moving backwards and what Marcus does, he can just capitalize on that, he just keep moving. So he takes the, a quick bind and when he when he sees that Linus is just backing away, he can just, he just take the one more step and cut to the arm, the extended arm from, from Linus. We can see the, see the whole thing. Okay, I can just flick this uh, forward a few times. Yeah. So, 
And you see, uh, it's just open, open target for, for, for markers. And coming in. Yeah, and Linus backs away, which actually, in a way, turns this into a bit of a diagonal move from Marcus Arinu. I don't know if people saw the last episode we did when we did the technical analyze, and I was talking about moving diagonal when you attack. This turns into a bit of a diagonal move from Marcus, actually, as Linus moves away and tries to change the direction. Mm. And I think I, this I really is, um, yeah, I mean, if, if, if we go back uh, to here, um, You'll see that, um, I mean, Linus has come out and he's got his sword yeah. extended, um, yeah. but he, he doesn't really have an answer to um, someone who's um, proceeding resolutely, which may uh, exactly. may may ring a bell with some rapier people. Um, <laughs> but he, coming in, and uh, as we saw brilliantly in the, the earlier uh, still picture, he was completely off balance. And as you say, he's yeah. moving backwards. Um, there's no attempt at any lateral movement whatsoever. Um, and uh, something we described before we, we began recording this episode is Marcus is a very aggressive forward attacker and he's using um, these, these, these sweeping uh, motions to clear the line and move forwards. And we were wondering if you know, this works very well against someone who is going to back straight away, um, and particularly when you've got this, this large map where you can use the space and use the momentum. Uh, but is, is this something where Marcus falls down perhaps when he's fighting more experienced individuals who are going to use more lateral movement? Um, and, and again, if we look at the last techniques video, we were seeing uh, very good examples of, of lateral movement taking people yeah. who are charging forward or making an attack and, and letting that momentum um, fault them in some instances. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, Marcus, Marcus is a very skilled fencer. He's a bit in, in the shadow of maybe other Dutch fencers like T. Cool and Arthur Fama. He's a very, very skilled fencer, but he's, in this he's very, very aggressive and it works well in this fight. Um, can, we, can we take a look again on the whole situation? False edge to edge and then takes the arm. Perfect. I, I, I love it because he used the whole area. He uses, he pretty much runs over the whole, the whole uh, mat. And that's uh, something we don't see very often. It, but he has a plan from the start. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this. And then he just follows, follows through. So he sets up a, a very, very nice attack. And it works perfectly uh, at the, uh, on, on this opponent. It's, it's very, very nice. I like Indeed. it. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Uh, should we move on to the next fight, uh, next exchange? Okay, ready when you are. Uh, yeah, we can go. I can I can just introduce them first. It's I think this is the Thomas Nissel versus David Morleo, right? Thomas Nissel from Sweden in, in the yellow socks. This is a completely different way to set up the attack. What Thomas does is he's searching. He's trying to feint. He, he wants to create. He wants to threaten his opponent and make him open up. And we will see it here. There it comes. And then he goes in, attack the arm and moves away. Very, very nice. Very, very uh, precise fencing from Thomas Nussel. Uh, he uses, he's so patient in this whole exchange. He comes out with a plan here. Thomas moves out. Here they meet, and he tries a little faint the first here. Yeah. There, but he doesn't get a reaction he wants. His opponent is steady, okay? So he backs away, find a measure again, and he tries to faint. Here comes the faint that will open up. There it is, you see the reaction from the opponent. So Thomas knows, when I do this, my opponent will go out with his sword, and kind of go over the line. So Thomas just go in and do the same thing, but cuts cuts from the other side. It's very, very nice, very precise move. And I think when we talked earlier about this, we saw something, and I would like to uh, would like to yeah. I would like you to, to mention that again, Rob. If we go out again, if we yeah. see the exchange again in slow motion, we stop when they when they meet in the middle, so we can talk about that. 
So again, um, something which um, viewers may be starting to realise is that I, one of my main interests is footwork um, and the actual body mechanics rather than um, you know, just the blade work on this. Um, something that's coming in here um, is, is our old friend Measure. Look how close to me it gets to Thomas. Yeah. Um, and can what, what's can interesting... Can we stop? Yes, indeed. Yeah. Look, look, at the, um, look at the red little circle in the middle between them, mm. you know. And you can see if you if you know how how big that circle is. It's not very big actually. So you know how how close they are here. They're very very close. Yeah, and I think something that, that struck me with this is um, actually Thomas could have hit him with a, a, a thrust. Um, and we'll come yeah. on to your comment. I think about um, David's hand placement in a second. I think Thomas is um, doing what any great fencer would do. Is 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 sussing out their opponent. He's not just going to go for that um, because I, I think he's, he's obviously a little bit unsure about what David's going to go. He, the, the guy's so close to him. Um, yeah. Maybe someone a little less cautious than Thomas would have gone for that that thrust straight to the, the throat, probably. Um, but as we, as we play this and we look, um, if we just examine how the uh, the measure mm -hmm. closes here, so a little step back there. And then a reassessment, he's coming in, yeah. perhaps, I mean, David's a, a rapey fencer showing some footwork stuff there, and he keeps on coming in, a little slip back, but still yeah. creeping in close. Yeah. And my issue with this is that where Thomas is able to do an attack, and I'll just stop it there, yeah. um, where Thomas is able to do an attack, the position of David's sword is such that he is unable to make a recovery or, or a suitable parry because he's just too close. A far yeah. single tempo attack will push through and, and punish him. What we've actually got is something slightly different, which um, I'd like you to describe uh, now uh, in, in relation to David's hands. So yeah, just start uh, playing again. Uh, Thomas' opponent, David, holds his hands uh, in front of his body. It's kind of a high guard, but he, he's not holding his hands up near the ear or on, uh, over the shoulder. He's kind of low and in front of his body. Uh, and I think Thomas really sees this and knows that if, if I just get the feint, uh, David will move his sword um, over the line actually, very quickly. Yeah. Since he's so close, since he's so close, um, the arm will be a, a, a target. It will, it will be a very, very close target for Thomas to strike. So um, I think a better way to, to, to fight Thomas in this situation would have been to, I mean, take the measure out first and then also take your arms up. Don't be yeah. afraid of, of, of take the arms up. You don't have to be so fast with, with the sword all the time. It's better to have the, the proper measure is much more useful is, and more important. And then put your hands up uh, near near the air or or, uh, or over the shoulder when you have the high guard i, I would su suggest that again yeah the, yeah and the, i think i think this is something if i'm just going to um, bring this back a little bit yeah, um, here, um what we're seeing is is um i think just just as we were discussing this uh now what i was wondering is is thomas thinking well i could have gone for a, a thrust to the throat but any any uh cut parry in, into the blade is going to push that thrust well out the yeah. way. However, yeah. get that blade moving, even with a, a false or even if he passes over the, his um, with, with the left foot, he's not going to be able to realign the blade in time to protect that arm. And that's yeah, exactly, exactly what happens. So again, we come through to this, this final technique, just a yeah. tip. One, two, bam. Yes, very, very nice. And I like the patient, uh, the patience that Thomas uses in this whole exchange. It's quite long exchange, but he's in no rush whatsoever. He's gonna, he, he's going to land that clear cut, and he's he's willing to let it take a little time. And I, I really like that. That when fencers don't rush in and just get you know hasty and they get uh, sloppy. But uh, I, I really like what Thomas do is doing here. Yeah. Uh, okay. Should we go on to the next uh, exchange? Maybe. Whenever okay. you're ready, sir. Okay, and uh, this next one is uh, uh, now it's Nicolas Galardo versus Aaron Pinnenberg. Um, 
the last episode we did, uh, we showed Aaron Pinnenberg showing some really nice uh, diagonal moves and uh, mm -hmm. very, very good technical skill. Uh, this time he's on the receiving end when he fights uh, Nicolas Gallardo, um, who comes in with a, a very, very nice uh, reversed grip thrust. So we're going to take a look at that now. Okay. I should mention before we see this, uh, there is a very annoying judge uh, who manages to ruin everything for the cameraman. Uh, oh, and uh, yeah. who this cad is, we don't know. Um, no, no, we'll, that, we'll, we'll have to slow it down so people can see. Um, through. <laughs> you, you wanted to emphasise the, um, we'll actually see the shots through the this particular judge's massive bulging muscles. You were very clear yeah, that I yeah. had to emphasise this. Okay, all right then. Yeah. Thank you, uh, thank you very much. Uh, okay, anyway. Okay, Nicolas Gallardo comes in from the left, Aaron in red pants from the right. This goes fast. And there. And there it is. And it's over. It's very, very quick. Okay, let, let's, let, let's do this. I think we have to stop uh, and do pretty much a little frame by frame in this because it's so fast. Um, okay, let's, let's start it over. This is a very, very interesting. Look at the distance. The, uh, Nicholas has leaned a little bit forward, Aaron as well. Aaron has his sword very, very far out in a, in a, in a long guard, pointing directly towards Nicholas's face, but he's not uh, thrusting from there. So Nicholas can, can stay there pretty safe, actually. Yeah, if we think of this one with regards to the last one with um, Thomas and David, um, again, we get a little circle there. I don't know if they're exactly the same size, but there's slightly more distance and um, obscured by our muscular uh, judge here. Um, Aaron's rear leg is quite extended, so he's um, perhaps not going to be able to have the forward motion he might want if he wants to do a thrust. So Nico's a little bit out of, uh, uh, further out than we've seen in the last episode. And stance-wise, Aaron is quite committed uh, to the front leg. Nico, however, look at his foot position, look how it's braced and that, that knee as well. Uh, he's able, he, he's, he's, um, he's, he's basically keeping himself in a position whereby he can move any way he wants to. So uh, uh, sorry, sorry, I just realized something as well. Before we go on with this, take a look at the guard that Nico stands in. It's a high guard, but it's as, as David in the last exchange. It's quite low, you know, he has, mm -hmm. has his hands down low. However, Nicholas has turned his body more uh, uh, with his left shoulder towards Aaron. So he's mm -hmm. much more free. He, he keeps his arm away, actually. He's not much that much of a target, his arm. And he, he th his position makes him uh, a little bit more free when it comes to moving his sword and changing the guards. And we will see how he does that. It go, it's really, really yeah. fast from here. Okay, so let, let, let's look at it. Uh, okay, okay so here comes the first first guard change from Nico. He goes down, lets the sword just fall down and takes it, picks it up into a, a middle guard. If we go through. Okay, yeah. There it is. You see a little little turn on, also on his foot, and now he's in the uh, going into a middle guard, and from there directly he just switches into reverse grip, and just sees the opening, takes it, moves in. So, uh, look at look. Yeah. That's a beautiful way. The way he uses the thrust, he just he pushes the weapon out in front of it and then follow with the body exactly the way you should do. Then you land the attack and you're much, much safer. You don't give you away an opening at all. And uh, Aaron's cut, Aaron tries to cut against this, but it, it misses because uh, Nico, Nico controls the line. Very, very nice. Indeed, I was going to say is that Aaron um, has removed his weapon, removed his feather from yeah. Uh, what he feels, I think, is going to be a beast or something like that, um, and he's, he's, he's prepping something. Nico, of course, is all he's doing is he's using that 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 turn to set up the reverse grip, um, yeah. and also uh, basically put his his opponents in um, uh, in submission by getting him to move. And uh, yeah. Aaron's making grosser moves, uh, such um, which is going to increase the tempo that he has. 
um, you know, the, the time which he's going to take to do things. Um, and then Nico is just capitalizing on this. Yeah. And one more thing about the, the reverse grip thrusts. I've been on the receiving end several times uh, for them. And it's really, really hard. If you've never seen them before, uh, the first time you, you, you get hit by it, it's, it, it's so quick and you don't understand what the, what, what happened actually. It's, it's very, very confusing. So when Nico goes from the high guard into a, a middle guard and then just change it into that weird reverse grip thing and just follows through, it's very confusing for the opponent. So um, let's do it in full speed so people can just see the whole the whole yeah. nice motion from Nico, where, the way he changes here. So Look at this. Like... Yeah, there, yeah. and there. It's so, it looks so smooth, everything. It's just... His moves just links together perfectly. We are about to uh, record a second one, which we'll release a little bit later uh, from this one. But thank <laughs> you very much, everyone, for joining us. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Alzheimer. Hmm.